well, come on, boy. Stop oh. us now. I'll tell you how we're going to make it happen. Let's take a ride and spend the day in the Welcome, inside. Creepy Old Crypt, The Gauntlet, Part 3. <laughs> we, well, this is the third week of Creepy Old Crypt pleasures delivered to your doorstep, and we're not stopping. Well, actually, after this, we are stopping. Yes. Because it's freezing in California. <laughs> all my friends in Texas, all our buddies in Texas, yep. are, have been complaining all day that it's a 90-degree day <laughs> in February. And in California, it's the opposite. It's so cold. It's freezing here. I got an, a second jacket. Um, I still have, I didn't even get to show these in the other episodes. Oh, yeah. I got my vintage Disneyland, uh, wait, it's on the leg. Vintage Disneyland uh, pants here. <laughs> They've got old 50s Disneyland blueprints on them. I wore them because they'd be extra warm. We're here in Toontown, and you know what? I gotta say, this area, this might be the best area in Disneyland. Look at this. I could spend hours in this in this place. I could just spend hours here. Uh, we're making jokes. Yeah. Uh, they removed a fountain that was right here and just put AstroTurf. Yes. Uh, so. There are... Uh, I don't know how, yeah, there used to be a really cool Roger Rabbit fountain and they just put AstroTurf in its place. You just said that, I don't yep. know why I said it again, sorry. <laughs> but uh, there are, uh, we might lose some followers on this next comment, but what? there are people online who I like to call Disney bootlickers who will not let anyone say like Disney did something wrong. Yeah. So, so it's not like there's anything wrong with this area. But everyone was just like, oh, that's lame. The fountain's gone. Yeah. Now, they're going to build a new fountain down there. So I'm sure that's why they got yeah. rid of it. It's like the focal point can be the new one. Yeah. But people were like, no, no, I think it's great the fountain's gone. I'm glad the fountain's gone. This, that AstroTurf area is like one, it's like maybe the best spot in yeah. all of Disneyland. Now kids can can play hide and seek. <laughs> uh, they can roll around. They can uh, piss in the grass. They can do whatever they want. And it was just like, like nah. okay, well, uh, yeah, it's fine. But I, I still miss that fountain. No. No, the fountain is, was bad. I found there's two types of theme park fans. Yes. The one is that where they're like, they can't do anything wrong. Everything's great. Yes. And the other one is, why do you even like theme parks? And they can never say a good thing about a theme park. Yes, thing. that's true. That exists too. And they just, anything that it's like, oh, I hate yes. this. I hate that. Yes. And it's like, then what are you doing that, here? That does like, happen. There are people who are, if it's something you love, you should have a degree of criticism. Because, yeah. like, for Disneyland, it's expensive as hell to go here. So, you don't, if there's stuff that is, like, not worth your dollar, say something. Yeah, yeah. okay, good. But, yeah, there are some people that are just like, oh, my gosh, you, they can't please you yeah. either. They're, they're, there's, there's nothing but negative things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That does happen. Yep. I mean, I, I notice that in everything. But, anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, what, what were we even talking? Oh, yeah, so this area was, for about a day, was, like, Twitter minefield. Yeah. It was, like, battlefield, whatever. But it seems to have cooled down here. The kids aren't playing hide and seek anymore. We're here at night. Um, uh, the new Mickey ride is just over there. Um, it's right the over there. It's gone down quite a bit now. Yeah, when we got here, so we went on it moments before this. Yeah. And uh, it was pretty it, dead. Yeah, we went like right on. Yeah. Today is the first day, the day we're recording this mm -hmm. is the first day they've opened up the line to just be, you could just get in well, line. You didn't need a virtual thing. Yeah, you didn't need a special. Yeah permission to go in you could just go in and uh and so it was like oh how's that gonna be yeah. we, we just pretty much walked in uh and then we can yeah we came out and it was like tidal waves of people trying to get in yeah. it was like how did we time that so well <laughs> anyway um by the way i want to add to this as well uh part one of the gauntlet we did yeah. the nintendo episode yeah i found a I, voice at that point now I have, don't have any voice at all. Kevin I, and I have transferred. Uh, he started fresh. <laughs> I was, when we started, I, I was, I had not eaten. I had not had water. Yeah. I was, you can watch me. I'm like about to faint by the end of that episode. <laughs> then I got better for the, uh, the for the Independence Hall yeah. episode. Now I have not only eaten, but I have chugged, I chugged a huge coffee <laughs> right before this. So you saw me flipping through the park just now. You're going to see it again in a second. <laughs> And, and I told Kevin earlier, I was, I'm going to be explaining how the theory of how does animation become real? I can tell you how cartoon becomes, it, it, see, it's part of it's a cartoon, part of it's real. You're going to see all kinds of that today in the special episode of Creepy Old Crypt. But today, we didn't even say it. We're talking about the new ride here in Disneyland, yeah. 
Mickey's Runaway Railway. Run, is it Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway? Yes, yes, it is. I totally forgot yep. that Minnie was involved. Sorry about that. I won't do that. I know it was. Uh, when's w Women's History Month? What month is that? Well, either way, I let I let ever I let you down. Yeah. And uh, it won't happen again. And I apologize. Um, I don't know if that's June or when. I don't know when that is. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh, but anyway, this new ride just opened. Uh, they've been renovating Toontown here in Disneyland. Yeah, the rest of Toontown isn't open yet. Right. A lot of it is, like some of it is, yes. like the bathrooms and stuff, but there's yeah. a whole extra section that's yeah. not open yet. And they delayed the opening. When, when, it's now when the 19th is it? of it's March. It's the 19th? Yeah. Okay. When was it supposed to be? It was the 9th. To... Oh, okay. I think it delayed it just a bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, a lot. Toontown is a land here that a lot of people thought was going to be gone for good. Yeah. Every time there's a new land announced or some kind of new project, they're like, oh, dude. Like, no, Toontown's gone. Yeah, they're going to bulldoze Toontown because yep. no one cares. And I'll be honest, too. I've had a pass. I've had an annual pass for, oh, my God. I don't even want to say. 18 years I at this point? Oh, God. Yeah. I'm Personally, I don't know how long you've had. A long time. Yeah. And I've probably been to Toontown. I could count it on one or two hands. Yeah, I never go to Toontown. I go because I, I, I like the ride. It's it's more nostalgia than anything. You're talking about Roger Rabbit. Yeah, Roger. Because it always had the Roger Rabbit ride. And that was it. It had a coaster, but I fuck that. I yeah, yeah, that. the coaster is whatever. Yeah. But Roger Rabbit was for a lot of people a favorite ride. I always liked it. I don't know if I l ever loved it. It's not bad. I'm not saying it's bad. It's a classic dark ride. So it's good, but it just never. Um, I love Roger Rabbit. I love dark rides. Me too. But it just, it never like, I don't know what it was. It never like stoked my imagination. It never, I don't know. I don't know what it is in, yeah. the, in the same way that some of the other rides here would do. Like, wow, you know, I, yeah. I would go on this. I'd be like, oh, that's cool. I love Roger Rabbit. To me, the the thing is it's Roger Rabbit. And also the queue for that ride is so good. So good. Where you're just in the back streets of yeah. Toontown. Um, so I love that. However, I got to get into, I, I don't want to, this is supposed to be a Mickey episode, fun episode. <laughs> They've been not only erasing Roger Rabbit from Toontown, like every time they build a new thing, Roger's not in it anymore, yeah. it's Mickey. Not only are they doing that, but then in Roger's own ride, there's Erasure. Yep. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. What did they erase? They erased, uh, uh, she's not wearing a red dress anymore. Uh, Jessica You're, Rabbit yeah. is, is now a detective. Yeah. And uh, she's solving mysteries now. Why so. would they want to make her a detective? And. A detective wearing a trench coat. Huh. What are they covering up? I'm afraid to ask. Yeah. Google Jessica Rabbit. You'll find out. <laughs> and you, and there's plenty. There's scenes in the movie where she's not wearing a trench coat. And you'll see what they're trying to hide from us. <laughs> but if you watch the the whole movie, not just a little bit, the full thing. Yeah. You'll see what, what, was, what we were denied. <laughs> so anyway, that's a whole other story. Legitimately, I do. Th I do wonder. Wh I don't really get why they did that. I don't know either. I have a feel. Well, why I think I know why they did that. Why they covered her up is because with the new Mickey ride, I think a lot more kids are coming down here. Yeah. So they were like, "Yo, get in front of this now." Yeah. We don't. We don't want to show them anything risque. Mm -hmm. But I could get into this. I got a whole. Full, I got a whole thing I could say about like, how does that reduce the character if she's wearing a dress i don't i just to, i could get into a whole thing i'm not yeah. going to i'm gonna save save it for my uh men's rights activist podcast that i'm gonna be doing after this so i'm not gonna get into it here that's a separate show uh this is creepy old crypt that's a uh, creepy old man cave uh definitely creepy and old yeah anyway no that's that's anyway uh but uh no anyway so th this ride is here i'm actually surprised they didn't open reopen roger yeah during, I, it's right too. here. There's nothing blocking it. Yep. That's kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, it didn't exit through the gift shop. No, no, no. It just comes out. No, there. it just it it can't. I can't remember where it exited. No, it, it just exits right out the the front of the. the oh yeah, there. you're right. Yeah, I remember that now. I never noticed. Hold on, until right now. That the closed doors of the ride have a body cut out, like yeah. Roger went through you the door. Really I never saw that. Sorry. Oh, is it like the car went through it too? I think Sorry. it's like him in the car yeah. busted through it. 
I never saw that because anytime I go by, that door's not closed. Yeah. Guys, we're seeing incredible things tonight. <laughs> this is amazing. Anyway, I've come to appreciate that ride more over time. I'll say that. Yeah. But anyway, uh, but that's not what we're here to talk about. That was at one point the only ride that and that little, there's yeah. a little kid's coaster. Um, now Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Rail Railway is in here and what a needed addition oh, it's to so town. Good. Not only are they not getting rid of Toontown, they're adding this wonderful cartoon ride yeah. where you go into a Mickey cartoon. Yeah. And, and it, they had already built in Florida. Yeah. And uh, if we're, since like 2020, I think is when it opened. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what a difference context makes because in Florida, they bulldozed a beloved ride to yeah. build it. The great movie ride. Yeah. And people are still sad about that. Today. I, to me, that was like the anchor of that park. Mm -hmm. And to get rid of that was so uh, wrong. Yeah. And so then you go on the Mickey ride and it's like, oh, you replaced all that with this cartoon thing. Great. But here, it yeah. fits perfect. Yeah, and all it got rid of was a gift shop. We lost a gift shop, but we're getting a new gift shop. Yeah, who cares? So we lost, like, yeah, the old gag factory. Yeah. Is that what it was called? Yep. Um, and it's shop. a bigger ride. Yeah. Like, they got a bigger more, version more of it. More space. Yeah. So. There's little things that definitely say to me that maybe we got a higher budget on ours or something like that. Yeah. But it's uh, in... Or more the, time to figure things out. Yeah. In the context of Toontown here, it that it's such a great fit. Um, and I'll just say up front, let's just say, like... I love this ride. Yeah. I think it's a great ride. What do you too. think? Yeah, I really, really like it. It's you, really good. I, I had done it. I had done it in Florida, and again, I was bitter about Great Movie Ride, but I still thought it was a really cool ride. Yeah. But yeah, you. This is your first yeah, time. Yeah, first time in it, and I loved it. Yeah, I thought it was really cool. Cool. And yeah, uh, there are there are. It's uh, a trackless ride, like Rise of the Resistance, like Ratatouille. Yeah. Which but, I knew of going when they announced it. Oh yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And I forgotten on the ride. Yeah. So when it did the trackless stuff, yeah. I was like, oh, I forgot. And yeah. it, it was such a cool experience. They kind of trick you yeah. into, uh, there's a great psychological trick when this ride starts. We'll yeah. go into it more as we go on, but uh, a train pulls up and it really looks like it's all stuck on a track. Yeah, there's a track on the ground and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And then when the ride goes on, suddenly it derails and breaks and the and, and like, part. Yeah, the, the, the locomotive is off on another and then yeah. you're off on like another adventure yeah. and it's really cool. But the fact that the lo the fact that the load in fakes being on a track puts your brain into like, oh we're gonna go on a little I was dinky completely train. there. Yeah. My brain was there. So I was so surprised when it did that. Yeah, it's great. It's yeah. really, really cool what they did. Uh you know, when it, there's always controversy when it comes to projection in a ride. Like, oh, do you use it too much instead of animatronics? Yeah. Um, I I will say on one end of the spectrum, this is just me, That I went on that Ratatouille ride for the first time in yeah. Florida last year. I thought that was too much projection. Yes. When you go into the fridge part, not to spoil it if you haven't been on it, but there's parts where it's like you're among a bunch of big food, like bigger than you, so you feel like you're a little mouse. Yeah. Is you a man or a mouse? I don't want to curse, but you're an effing mouse. Look up what that F word is. Um train's coming uh those parts are great yeah where it's like oh these things are physically huge yeah that's like one room yeah and the rest is just they push you into projections i don't like that personally yeah this ride to me i thought did it really creatively it's a good mixture there, there's yeah. animatronics in most of the rooms yeah and also all the walls are projected yeah so there's there's things active uh in the foreground background it's the first two and a half d ride they said yeah. and i think it like that's a great way to describe it. There's like a lot of creative things happening. It's not just look at that projection. All right, look at that. You know, it. it yeah. I, they were more creative than that. Um, there's even parts I'm still trying to figure out that I don't know how they did it. Yeah. Um, but let's start with yeah. like when you first go in. The so, queue, basically. Oh, so the difference between so yeah, you first approach the ride. Yeah. The difference in Florida, in Florida, you got the, it's, uh, they, they, the Chinese theater. Yeah, it's a Chinese theater because yeah. the old movie, the great movie ride was in a uh, Chinese theater. Yeah, just like in LA. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so that's what they got. Here, it's a total custom thing. They made it like the El Capitoon, I think. It's like, yeah. it's like your local theater. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, everyone across the board is saying, the one here it's it was built new from the ground up and it's so full of stuff yeah there are people saying this is one of the best queues ever 
It's what do so you good. think? There's so you? much to see. It's yeah. almost like a museum. Yeah. It's, it really is. It's yeah. A, it, it's just cool. Like, and every time I go in, I see something new. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this though. Uh, I do think it is one of the most fun cues I've ever seen. Yeah. In terms of like, there is so much stuff to look at. It's a it, it, it really does a great job bridging the gap of like, okay, out, out here in Toontown, it's classic Mickey. Yeah. But then the ride is kind of based on the newer Mickey shorts. Well, when you go in that theater, you see the oldest Mickey Mouse stuff yeah. all the way through every era of Mickey ever. Yeah. 80s, 90s, all that kind of stuff. All of it's there to the point that it's like, well, they're not going to have Mouser size from the 80s. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Well, they're not going to have Disco Mickey from the 70s. Oh, there it is. Well, they're not, anything you think they're not going to have, yeah. it's there. Yeah, and they have Disney Channel stuff with like the big mouse could doer and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, the mouse could doer <laughs> that you get to see what they're gonna mouse could do. Yeah. Uh, Nader do will like that one. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, but but everything, every era is in there. Yeah. So one of the, one of the most fun cues ever. Now, but I'm gonna say this. I don't. I I kind of don't know. I think there's good and bad about but well. How do I say this? I don't think the queue in Florida is bad. People are mad that, of course, they shoehorned it in where the great movie ride yeah. is. But I think there's good things about both. Okay. I will say this. The, the, the Chinese theater version in Florida has that old Hollywood feel. You go in and it's very, it's lit dimly. It's like velvet ropes. And yeah. Like it's that. very fancy. Yeah. This one here is lit not romantically at all. Yeah. It is lit like your local theater. It's like almost like fluorescent li lighting when you go in. And but it's that's what they're going for. Yeah. You know, there there's like movies on the marquee and they're misspelled, you know? Yeah. That's what they're going for is like, all right, this let's go into this dumb theater and see a cartoon, you know? And it's full of every prop you could ever imagine. So yeah. they did a great job. This is not taken away from that. But I also do like the like I said the romance of the Florida one where it's lit, it's got that dim lighting and everything's velvet. Yeah, yeah. It really feels like you're going into a fancy, old, classic L Hollywood theater mm. to see a classic Mickey cartoon. And then it all goes wrong, yeah. you know? Uh, so I do like that cue too. That okay. one's more moody. This one's more funny and fun. Yeah. So there, I don't think there's like a winner. I don't, I, I don't think that one is an objective winner. I mean, maybe you could say this one, but I like them both. I yeah. like them both. I okay. don't think one is wrong. This has got um, different styles. Yeah, the exactly. Thing. This one is definitely more like things to look at and laugh at. And yeah. that, that maybe that is better for a cartoon ride. Um, you know, so I don't know. That's that's my two cents on both. Um, but the cute, oh my God. Uh, my favorite gag in the whole thing is uh, they have the prop from Mickey and the Beanstalk where uh, oh, yeah. he has the case of magic beans. And the display is actually knocked over. The beans are spilled, and one of the beans has grown into a gigantic beanstalk coming out of the roof. That's my favorite gag. Yeah. Like, and, and people still walk by it and go, "Oh, that fell over." No, it, no, that's the gag. Yeah. Like it, it broke. And then it grew up. Yeah. Anyway, and it's doing like sound effects that sound like the 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 roof is crumbling. Yeah. Like it's cracking. Mm -hmm. That's and you a can great see light gag. Through it, like the daylight. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Uh. I love that. I love the haunted dresser that you see the ghosts. Yeah, that's one of my favorite Disney shorts ever. Yes, is, I agree. It's the ghost catching one from the, like, the 20s or 30s. I agree with that. I agree. That's uh, one of my favorites too. Great. Uh, I really like the behind glass is a, is a hot dog that says the first hot dog served at the El Capitoon. Yeah. Do not eat. And oh. it's, it's just sitting there behind glass. Yeah. I like that joke. Uh, I was telling Kevin, I went with my family. Uh, they, they didn't. This is when they were still doing virtual queue for the yeah. ride. My family had not done that. So I was like, I'll do it for you and I'll, I'll, I'll get you on there. So I went with them on the ride and uh, I pointed out, I love that like, they act like all the props in the displays and stuff are real physical props yeah. that were in real cartoons, yeah. which is of course the gag. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, oh look, isn't that great? Like they have, like they have like the skeleton arm from uh, the skeleton dance yeah. in the, you know, a skeleton's arm from, from that classic cartoon. Yeah. And I was like, isn't that funny? They treat it like a real thing. And then we got further into the queue and my dad and my dad is looking at Mickey. What was it? The Prince and the Pauper. Yeah. I, like those costumes where Mickey yeah. was both. Mm -hmm. And my dad's like, wait, it says these are the real props. 
but how could they be the real props if these, this was a cartoon? And I was like, yeah, that's the joke. <laughs> and it was like, oh, oh. I was like, well, that's what I was talking about a minute ago. Yeah. But it does a good job convincing you. The exhibit convinces you this is all the real stuff. And I could see being a kid buying into that totally. Yeah. Uh, me, my dad, my mom, whatever. We're, we're kids at heart, so, you know, <laughs> fall for stuff like that. Anyway, uh, but anyway, yeah, so uh, there's so much. I'm trying to think of anything else, but there's so much stuff in that queue. There's a ton. There's, like, like Sorcerer Mickey stuff. Yeah. There's, there's, there's uh, a lot of posters that basically, like. Yeah, the like, fake posters. That, that change stuff around and yeah. stuff, like, uh, yeah. I uh, I hadn't seen the the I hadn't seen the wizard hat floating. Oh yeah. It actually it's on a display and then every now and then it actually it levitates. Yeah. And people in the queue were actually going like, how does it do that? I can't see the thing. You like, can't see any wires yeah. or anything. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. Um, I did want to say about the posters. There was drama with the posters. You told me about this. Yeah. I follow a guy named Kevin Lively. I think his name is on Twitter. He was a big Imagineer. I think he worked on like Jungle Cruise okay. stuff like that. He worked on a bunch of stuff, but his thing was Jungle Cruise. He always did had Jungle Cruise stuff. I think he worked on the new update for that. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway, long ago, months and months and months and months ago, he tweeted. He said, hey, because he left Disney because a lot of Disney Imagineers got purged yeah. uh, when they they announced, oh, we're going to move them all to Florida. A lot of them retired and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Which is stupid. That was a total Chapek move. Yeah. But he's gone, so maybe they'll reconsider. Yeah. Anyway, uh... Yeah, so they, uh, where was I, where was I going with this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hocus Pocus. Oh, no, so he said on Twitter, this was months and months ago, yeah. he said, when you see something show up in the parks and then show up somewhere else in the parks, just know it was dim done by different teams and the other one was done way, way, way before the <laughs> other one. And I mean, it was like, that's too vague. What are you yeah. talking about? And then this ride opens, that Kevin guy, this was one of the last things he worked on. Yeah. And there are fake movie posters all throughout it. Yep. And one of them, like uh, Disney, like the, what was it called? The the duck trap. And it's like a parody of the parent trap yeah. or something like that. I don't know if that's what it's called, but yeah. something like that. Uh, there's one for Hocus Pocus. Yeah. And it's, who is it? Like Minnie? Minnie, Clarabelle, and Daisy? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Dressed as the Hocus Pocus witches. Yeah. And last Halloween, we saw those characters. They actually had the characters walking around yeah, dressed like that. Yeah, characters walking around, costume characters, yeah. yeah. And so someone finally on Twitter was like, is that what you were talking about? Yeah. And he was like, yeah. The divisions of the parks are all different. We don't all work together. Yeah. He's like, and someone saw that poster and ripped off that idea and made those costumes. And the costumes came out before the ride. Yeah. Because the ride got delayed. So he was like, I, I had that idea. Yeah. And the the team, the Halloween team got the credit. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. Um, anyway, so, uh, where, where are we oh yeah, so there's the queue. The, the posters are so good. And, and it's genius because that queue is probably relatively not that expensive. Like having just hallways with a bunch of fake posters yeah. probably doesn't cost that much. No. But it gets everyone going, whoa! Oh, yeah. dude, the Mouseketeer, and it's like the Rocketeer. Yeah! Yeah! It's, it's easy wows for not much money, yeah. and I they, think. Yeah, they, they, I think it tapped into everybody's like, oh, I remember that. Like, yeah. 90s, 80s, stuff like that. Like, there's goofy movie references yeah. all over the place, all that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, most people going through there don't care about the, the what was it, the... The happiest scrooge in air or the happiest millionaire turned into like the scroogiest millionaire or the something? Scroogiest millionaire, yeah. An I, old like an old live action movie that not many people saw. Yeah, but my dad was like, oh shit, oh the the happiest millionaire. They did a parody of that. They really got every era. Yep. Any age group that goes through here is gonna see something. Uh anyway, uh so that cue is so well done. There is a gag that I've seen in there yeah. and didn't get it until today. There is a poster I'm trying to explain this there are, there is a poster for a Mickey short or a movie yeah. in there that I didn't know what the joke was because it's clearly a new poster yeah. that's called The Wrong Door yeah and it's like what? And it looks like an epic kind of indie movie kind of poster The Wrong Door and then there's door and then 
I was like, that's kind of weird. What is that for? I don't get it. I realized that they're by a bunch of theater doors that you can't go into. Yeah. So, and then the marquees say that, the wrong door. And it's like, oh, this oh. is just a gag that we can't go in here. Yeah, basically, <laughs> it's like you're not allowed to go in there, so yeah. wrong door. Like, what? Why didn't I come up with that? Why didn't I figure that out the last time? I mean, it was, it was, that's such a great gag. Yeah. The wrong door. You can't go. I'm sure people at home are going like, yeah, got it. <laughs> got it. Uh, but anyway, so well done. Yeah. Uh, all the gags. There's in a it. whole concession stand that's really well done. Yeah, that might be the, that might be one of the best parts. Tons of Mickey themed candy and stuff, which yeah. they should sell in the parks at some point. They would be fools to not sell all the candy in yeah. there. Like, uh, what was it, Mallard Cups or something? Yeah. They're... But it was like Darkwing Duck peanut butter cups? Yeah. I think we all, like tons of candy that I think everybody would buy. Power Lime uh, candy, which is like Power Lime from Goofy Movie. Yeah. Were you a big Goofy Movie yes. guy? I don't know how I missed that. Have you seen it? That era, yeah. I, it was like I had moved on. I was not watching. I was just old enough that I did not care. Really? I loved I, it. But I love Goof Troop. They, I watched Goof they, Troop. They, I loved they it. They make fun of Disney parks. They have a, they oh, have yeah. a knockoff uh, uh Country Bear Tambourine. Really? It's a father-son story. It's it's every ticks every box for me. I gotta see that. Yeah. Okay. I have friends who love it, and I'm always just like, Pfft. and they're like, you idiot. Uh one of my favorite tweets of all time is when somebody tweeted uh the the opening of the movie where it at first it just says a movie and yeah. then Goofy punches through. So they, it says a movie and they go, Oh good, a movie. There better not be any dumb bullshit in this. And then, oh what the oh. fuck, Goofy. <laughs> So I don't mean to curse here. Got a lot of kids playing hide and seek yeah. in this area. It's like the best area in Disneyland, dude. This is like the this might be the best area in the in a theme park ever. Look at this. AstroTurf. Anyway. Whenever I see AstroTurf, I think of those like airport dog piss stations yes. that they built. So that dog you can let your dog go to the you bathroom. Think a dog in the airport. Here? I they probably. I, I dare you to piss here. Not happening. By the end of this episode, someone's gonna piss. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so where was I going with this? Oh, yeah, we're Cue still talking about the queue. Yeah, that oh, concession yeah. area is adorable. There's a popcorn effect. I didn't even re realize yeah, until a after a couple. machine, and it's constantly popping popcorn. Yeah, but even that is like, it's like a Pepper's Ghost yeah. effect. It's not real. Yeah. Uh, it's popping popcorn, and a lot of people miss it, but the, the popcorn kernels, uh, the popped popcorn, whatever, is all like little Mickey and Minnie heads. Yeah. It's so cute. It's so great. And the best dad joke ever, ever written, did make it in the ride, where at the condiment stand, it says, my, uh, there's, a, there's a nacho cheese station. Yeah. And it says, my cheese and nacho cheese. <laughs> you get it? I wish I had a father. Uh, anyway, that's one of the, that's, I think that's one of the best dad jokes of all time. Yeah. Legitimately. <laughs> uh, anyway, I actually think my gym teacher told that story. Really? Or told that joke. Yeah. Back in the day. <laughs> He's not my dad. Anyway, uh, there's, yeah, that, that concession area is really well, like the best. And that's like the end of the queue. Yeah. Before you go into the ride. Well, yeah. Not the ride. Yeah, 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 yeah. The opening. Yeah. Real, real yeah. quick. If you get anything at the concessions at a movie theater, what do you get? You normally, I don't see you do that very often. I don't but if, do it very But if often. you do, like if you, right now, popcorn, blank check, what do you get? Popcorn and soda, probably. Okay, any, what's your, if you had to get candy, what candy do you get? Oh, uh. We already know it's not Reese's Pieces, no, so eliminate not, that. No, screw that. Uh, peanut M&Ms. Good choice, yeah. good choice, good choice. I'm also a fan, uh, Learn, learn this trick from. Uh, yeah, if I'm if I'm picking like chocolate, I'm going either peanut M and M's or I don't listen. It's at movie theaters only. Those Butterfinger bites, the or the the like little BBs. Butterfinger. Yeah. No, not BBs. The, oh. the, they're like little squares. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Like I don't I don't get a Butterfinger bar that often, if ever. But at the theater, the the, the squares. I want sometimes I want that. Yeah. But uh, M and M's if I'm going chocolate. Peanut M&M's, you know, are, are good. However, Method Man taught me the trick. Sour Patch Kids and throw them in your popcorn. Yep. Remember it works. We went to the uh, drive-in and did that. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. It works. Salty, buttery popcorn, and every now and then you get a little surprise. Oh, it works. So try that out. Anyway, I, I don't know why I had to know. 
I think it's all, all this coffee I'm on. I'm thinking a million miles. I'm thinking in the next week. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, that so whole that, section. Yeah, so you get through there. You get through there, then you go into a, basically a loading area that's a theater. Yes. Yeah. And that's what was funny. My mom and dad did not know anything about this yeah. right at all. And it was great getting into the theater room, and then they close you in, and the cartoon starts. It's a perfect picnic. Is that what it's yeah. called? Mickey, Mickey Mouse and a perfect picnic. And my dad goes, is this a ride? And I thought, I kind of was, I thought this was a ride. And I'm like, oh, you are in for a treat. Because it's very, it's very convincing. You're just in there, yeah. and there's only a screen, standing room, and yeah. you just watch the, the, the cartoon yeah, as it they, goes. Yeah, they enclose you in a room to watch a cartoon. And then it's such a great effect. Goofy crashes the train, yeah. and then and then there's a giant hole in the screen yeah. for you to walk through. A, a giant hole opens up that and it plays a little thing, like a little dialogue between the, yeah. the cast member and the and Goofy. Goofy talks to a cast member. Yeah, yeah that's you, pretty impressive. And you walk through the into the cartoon, basically. Yes. Yeah. And they did such a good job with that. Like, you walk through the screen into a, and then everything after that is painted like a cartoon. Yeah. Uh, that it's Toontown magic. It's yeah. Disneyland, Disney whatever, mm -hmm. Imagineering magic. Uh, yeah, it's one of those, I, it, that, when the when the theater, when the screen opens up and you walk through, that is one of those, I call them, I love Disneyland moments. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. I like, I think that, I think that it's just like, where else can you do something like this? Mm -hmm. You know, like even, even the like Little Mermaid ride in California Adventure, it's not like the best ride ever. It's not yeah. the most ambitious ride. But going backwards. Yeah, when you go backwards and, and the and the projection of water goes over you like you're submerging. Yeah. That's one of those moments. It's just like, man, Disneyland rules. I yeah. love Disneyland. So those just just those little special transitionary and moments. Every time know? I've been on there, somebody's been yeah. surprised by that. Too. Yeah. And there's like, whoa. There's always people yeah. in the room, kids or adults, just like, whoa. Like the screen just opened up, yeah. you know? It's just those moments where for a, for a second. The world isn't solid all the way through, yeah. you know? For a moment, there is, it, it was the look on their faces. What is that from? I don't know. Leave a comment what you thought that quote was from. And I'll tell you if you're, I'll respond to every comment to say if you were right or you were wrong. <laughs> um, anyway, do you know what it's from? I don't. Uh, well, you lost. Oh, fuck. Yep. Anyway, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, you walk through, you go through the queue, it's, it's like kind of a cartoon train station. Yeah. Lots of triple R's, like railroad yeah. uh, signs, which I thought was for the RRR, my favorite. Which I still haven't seen, I wanna see. Oh yeah, great great film, but yeah. that's not what it is. Um, oh, so yeah, then you load onto the train, but again, it follows yeah. the track. It, it's, it, they, they time it so perfectly that it just moves all in one and there's a track on the ground yeah. and you load in and you just put it down. Even though every set of seats is actually a separate vehicle, they make it look like it's all connected, yeah. which is so brilliant. And then you go in, you're going in the train, yeah. uh, and then Goofy's like, hi, I'm in charge of the train. I'm, yeah. I'm a, a, Through a door, like the, the, the yeah. front car is the locomotive and it opens up and it's yeah. Goofy and a projection just talking to you. But it, it's crazy because it, He's a 2D cartoon, but he's like three-dimensional from the background of the train. Yeah. And and they do that a few times in the ride. I have a theory on that I'm going to share with yeah. you in a minute. But he rides by, and then Mickey and Minnie ride up in their cart and accidentally run into a switch that sends it the, the train off its track, right? Yep. And that effect is really cool. Like, yeah. And they're animatronic. They're fully animatronic. Uh, they just, because I've seen a lot of people like, oh, there aren't animatronics on this ride. I'm like, no, they are, but they project yeah. stuff on them. Yeah, their yeah. faces are projected yeah. and their bodies are animatronic. Yeah. And they move really fluidly yeah. and smoothly. It's really cool. Um, anyway, so it derails from there. You go through a, like a Wild West part, yeah. like at a canyon. Mm -hmm. uh, then you go into a fair part. And again, in the booths around the fair. They're all cartoon people. Like, yeah. Like Donald Duck and everything like that. But they're like, they're, they're 2D animation. They're 2D animation, but they're 3D off of the background. Yeah. I think I have a theory on how they do that, because it doesn't look like they're projecting on a scrim at all. Yeah. So you, you are an electronics guy. Yeah. I think you are. Tell me if this is possible. Okay. I've heard people theorize this, and I think they're right. Mm -hmm. If you, I'm gonna spoil, maybe spoil a trick here, if you don't want to know, okay. if you haven't been on the ride, you know, who knows, but, if you strip an LCD down, mm -hmm. I think 
you can have images appear on a screen without a background. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking maybe it's like an OLED thing. Yeah. Where the ones that are, you can see through the, the things that are not yes. going or yes. on. And it uses that. I think they, yes, I think it's whatever, LED, LED whatever. OLED, whatever, yeah. whatever tech. They've done it and they've stripped it down to no background. Yep. And so I think there is actually a glass screen there, but it's only playing. you can see through. Yeah. Yep. And it's transparent. I think that's what it is. I think so too. I don't think it's a scrim or anything because they can't. Yeah. You would see the material. It's too high res and too good looking yeah. to be a projection. Yeah. I think it's, yeah. you're right. I think it's OLED or LCD or whatever. But I thought, I, I don't know about OLED and how it works, but, but LCD, I thought you could have one layer of it work without the rest. Yeah, you can. Or something. So, I don't know. Uh, am I right? I'm not sure, but the effect is great. Yeah, it looks it's like the cartoon. Good. Looks like the cartoons are standing in front of you. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a really great effect. Um, everything goes wrong in there. Yeah. A tornado happens. Yeah, and, and there's a giant animatronic balloon. That, oh yeah, that yeah, yeah. It's fine at first, and then when the tornado comes, they Mickey and Minnie kind of go, oh, and yeah. then they go down, which is a really cool effect. Yes. Uh, I was gonna say too, in Florida, I don't see it here. They have a sign in that scene for uh, the Great Moving Ride. So a little great movie ride nod, uh, to, nod in there. Yeah. But then you go into the, uh, you get sucked into a tornado and it's a physical tornado. Um, but I feel like, again, that effect is better here. It's like that you're kind of enclosed in it. I think yeah. you're looking at other stuff in Florida. Really? And it takes away from it. However, another Easter egg in there. I think it's in this one too. I think it's in both. Okay. That there's a, a, I think there's a mailbox for Kansas or something. Like it's uh, Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Uh, I think is in there. Okay. But anyway, that's cool. Then what what, what do you ex exit into? Is it a... Uh, that goes the, into the, the jungle? Uh, like, yeah, jungle area. Yeah. That becomes like kind of a like volcano. Yeah. Uh, kind of Tiki-esque, Tiki room-esque. Yeah, it goes volcanic and yeah. then you get sent into... Everyone gets sent into individual rooms. Yeah. You all get separated and they make it feel like you're going down a waterfall. Yeah, it's like a projection, like yeah. almost like motion simulator without the motion. Yeah. It's just a visual. They, they kind of... Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, yeah. your, your car. Because the cars are like haptic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they do something, they can shake the whole thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so it's still a cool effect. Yeah. Uh, that's the only part that is like, we are relying only on a projection and wind. But it works. It's the only part that's like that. Yeah. I think it's fine. Going back to uh, Ratatouille. Yeah. That was the first time I ever felt haptic stuff because like you go over a carpet. Yeah. And it feels like you're going over a carpet. Yeah. Like, like pittering, patter, pitter pattering over a carpet. Yeah, that yeah. was kind of cool. Uh, Anyway, so you do that, you come back out, yeah. then you're underwater, and a, like a squid is pulling up a drain and sending you down the drain, whatever. You go through like sewers or something, yeah. and then you end up in the city. Yes, uh, and another great effect there where uh, Pete, Peg Leg Pete, is it, what is his name? Is that his name? I just call him Pete, I don't know. Like, yeah, Pete is jackhammering and it's shaking the whole his city. His legs are like, it's a cool animatronic because it's yeah. like, his legs go up and it's, just doing that and yeah, it yeah, shakes yeah. the whole like you can feel it in your yeah. butt maybe that's how maybe that's who was jackhammering at the uh, Nintendo thing oh. I don't know it's not funny <laughs> uh, there are a lot of Imagineer in jokes in there okay I don't know if you saw this no. but uh, Kevin Rafferty was a big Imagineer dude and I think he has only recently retired always wore Hawaiian shirts oh, and okay. so in that city scene there is a Kevin's Kevin's Aloha shirts or something like that. Oh, Kevin's, I didn't miss that. It's Kevin's Aloha ha ha shirts. Yeah. So there's like credits to a lot of people who worked on it in there. I think it's Kevin Rafferty. Pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, might be the other Kevin I was talking about. It's not you. No offense, but uh, anyway. So there, and then you go from there. Where do you go from um, there? From there, you go into Daisy's dance studio. Oh yeah, the dance studio. I really like this part. Yeah. One of my favorite parts of the ride. And to me, it demonstrates how agile these GPS things yeah. can actually be. And and the benefit, the benefit of trackless is that you can have these, uh, this sounds weird, but intimate moments. Like, like she goes, all right, everyone come closer. Yeah, and you can all go in towards yeah. her. You could never do that on a track ride. Yeah. 
where she brings you in. And it's just like uh, on Rise of the Resistance, Kylo yeah. Ren pulls you in. Like, I'm going to get what I want. I'm pulling yeah. you in. Yeah. You can't get that on a track ride. It's really cool. Yeah. It is really, really cool. Um, I really like that part. She starts giving you a dance lesson. It's out of nowhere. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it becomes... Conga. Conga. And, da, 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 and they actually da. shake you to the thing. So you go... Doo. Dude, you, they, you go to the at every beat. You, yeah. you actually do the conga they, in the thing. They shake the hell out of you. Yeah, uh, during that part. They they kinda, it's kind of like whoa. <laughs> uh, it's great. Yeah. I love it. That's one of my favorite parts. I think that part's like adorable. I love yeah. it. Uh, and then is that you go to the factory at that you point? You go to the factory that they're like, no, don't go in there. And then you yeah. go in there. And I like the effect because you're basically on a conveyor belt with a big stamper at the end. Yeah. And they kind of like jut you forward. Yeah. As, as you're about to get chomped. Yeah. And then everything gets shut off, and it's all good and everything. And then it transforms. When he shuts the factory down, yeah. it transforms into a park. Yeah, it's just all all the projections change. Some animatronic yeah. stuff, like flowers come up. Yeah, and, I noticed light, lamp posts emerge out of the ground. Yeah. It's a really neat effect. It's yeah, it a really is. cool effect. Under, underrated part. Um, the only thing I'll criticize about this room is if you're in one of the later cars, sometimes you get to that room late, and you do not see, like, the factory scene is ended by Mickey is going through all the machinery, yeah. and then he lands on the off switch. Yeah. Sometimes you're, if you're the last car, you make it in, and you don't even get a chance to see Mickey do that. Yeah. You get in, and it's like, oh, it all changed. It's all good. The first time it went on the right, I was like, what happened? Yeah. I didn't see that. But that, then you all turn around, and basically, you're actually in different order now, but you yeah. re reconnect with Goofy's locomotive. Yeah. And and we were like the second car, and we became the first car. Yeah. Behind the locomotive. Yeah. Yeah. And he opens the door again. He's talking with you. And then maybe my favorite part of the whole thing is that last scene is great. Yeah. Where they have their picnic. It's animatronics of, of Mickey and Minnie singing the song which by the way i love the original song for this ride yeah nothing can stop us now it's i don't know how loop occasionally yeah there's this loop it's great yeah it's so uh it's catchy. catchy it's great uh and they're playing that he's playing the ukulele he's playing the ukulele he's playing the jason Mraz version <laughs> um of uh the song and and it's staged even better than Florida, yeah. where you see them and then you turn and then you pivot around and see fireworks. <laughs> Nothing can stop us now. Da 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 da. You know, like yeah. perfect finish. Now, one thing I'm confused about is they have an effect as you're leaving where Goofy goes, "Hey, thanks everybody." Wait, what does this button do? And it's supposed to shock your seat. Yeah. Like oh, like you feel the haptics. Yeah. Kevin, I'm so confused because. When I was in Florida, I swear that effect scared the shit out of me. Really? When it first happened, oh God! Like it scared me. Yeah. But here, I'm almost like maybe they toned it down. Maybe I didn't notice it. I'm yeah. like, oh, I guess they shook the seat a little bit. Yeah. But I swear in Florida, it, it was like it zapped me. <laughs> I definitely felt it hard. Yeah. Am I crazy, people out there? What do you know about this? They may have gotten feedback as like, I don't like that as much. Yeah. Maybe, maybe tone it down for this one. I don't know. Yeah. I really don't get it. Um, yeah, everyone out there, let me know yeah. what you think. But, uh, yeah, it's, I kept look, waiting for it, and it was like, wait, that happened? That what? I don't know. Yeah. Very odd. And then you get out, and it's like the train station, it's cartoon train station, whatever. I love that, I love a classy yeah. touch is they got the photo of Walt. Oh, in, yeah. Because he, yeah. Hang out of the train, the side of the he, train. He loved trains, yep. and there's a photo of him at the end waving from his train. You need, you, you did it. There is colder and colder air flowing in right yeah, now. Do you getting, feel it? I am so glad I bundled up. I found work, found work gloves in my in, the, <laughs> in my trunk, in my uh, caboose or yeah. whatever they call it, and uh, so I'm wearing them. Anyway, uh, so you basically exit back out of the screen in yes. the real world. Yeah. As you just walk out. Yeah. Which is really cool. Yeah. Uh, Somebody lit off the fire. The wait time. The the line never went back around uh, this no. way. I have to write it again. Um, no, but, uh, yeah, and, uh, you're supposed to exit into, like, a new gift shop they're doing, but it's not open yet. Yeah. So, uh, we have nothing to it say. It looks almost done, but they just have, uh, like, scrims up and stuff yeah. to cover it up. Yeah. It'll be open when they open up everything, I think. Yeah, but it looks cool so far. Yeah. There, you could tell, um, it's all covered up, but you can see up above you there's a train track. Yeah, that suspended, looks, like, yeah, like it, from the ceiling. It looks like a little train is going to go around the store. It looks really cool. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it's just a great, um, you know, they use the word story all the time when it comes to Disney attractions. And I think sometimes it's like almost not appropriate. Yeah. I'm, I'm, this may be a hot take, 
but sometimes a ride doesn't need a story and they overthink it. You know, right now they're they're talking about the new uh, Splash Mountain is going to get turned into the Tiana ride. Yeah. Or t into uh, Princess and the Frog. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of Princess and the Frog. But they announced the story stuff recently and it's yeah. like, uh, yeah, the, it's like Tiana wants sauce, but unfortunately she has no sauce. She needs ingredients to make sauce, but where will she find the ingredient? She asked her friends. They don't know. Yeah. She asked her mom. She doesn't know. So she must find the ingredients for the sauce, and it's like, I, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. Just have all the characters we love from this movie on the ride. Because yeah. I think that's a perfect, if you're going to replace Splash Mountain with a movie, that's the one to do it. Yeah. Uh, 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 especially here, it's connected to New Orleans Blue Square. Bayou, it's all perfect. Kind of yeah. But it, yeah, they, they keep trying to add a story. It's like, doesn't need it. Yeah. However, this Mickey ride, and I would say Rise of the Resistance, are the cases for, well, like, like, like Pirates of the Caribbean has really doesn't have a story. People yeah. keep trying to apply one to it. Same with Haunted Mansion. I think this is what's happening. They don't have a story. They're weird experiences. Yeah. And that's good. That's fine. They don't need more than that. Yeah. But this ride, Mickey and Rise of the Resistance, both exemplify a case for using the ride format to tell a story. Yeah. Not not a book report of a of a, a movie like Little Mermaid where it's like oh here's what happened in the movie this 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 yeah. not like that they tell their own original tale. Um, you know people people always ask me uh, do you think that Rise of the Resistance would be better if it was based on the original Star Wars movies? Well you know yeah I mean I love Darth Vader and stuff like that I would love to see that sure. But I always and even though I might I might you know I the the, the old Star Wars movies are my favorite I'll say that. But that's almost irrelevant to the ride because the ride is about, it's a story about you. It's almost. your own adventure. It, yeah, it's like, hey, you're in trouble. You need to get out of these caves, get into that ship, yeah. and a dude's going to direct you out. Uh-oh, you got detected. Yeah, fuck. You better go. It's not like the story of Luke versus Darth Vader. You know, that like, it's not doing that. So yeah. to me, it's almost irrelevant who it is. You're in that galaxy, and you got busted. You got to get out, you know? Yeah, would you like to see Vader? Yeah, I would, but that... It is not needed. In that, yeah, in it's that like context. it's about it's a more about me than those guys. Yeah, it's always about me. No, I'm just kidding. you know, but you know what I mean. It's yeah. like more about your your story. Uh, with Mickey, with the Mickey ride, yeah, you're going to see it's it's like they pull you into it. It's yeah. it's more about like you're going to see a cartoon the, and it gets all messed up. Yeah, the whole you, thing you go through. Yeah, I don't know. It's just that's that to me is neat. That's better than just telling the story of uh, you know like the, the, there's the Beauty and the Beast ride in Tokyo. Don't get me wrong, it looks like that. It, it it seems like I haven't I don't want to watch a bunch of videos because yeah. I want to go on it sometime. But it seems like it just tells the story of the movie. Yeah. But I'm sure it's still an incredible ride. So I'm not saying it can't be amazing. Yeah. But I, I just always think it's gonna be a little cooler when it's like, I mean, it, Indiana Jones nails it. Oh yeah. That is it's it's not about yeah. Indiana Jones. Yeah. Indiana Jones went in here. He hasn't come out. You yeah. He's gotta go in and try to find and, him. And now it's your problem. Yeah. And uh, oh, oh, you looked at the idol. It's not Indiana Jones. He flipped the switch. No. It's, you, you looked, looked at, at the, the idol. idol. Uh oh, you're in trouble. Yeah, good Bye. Luck. Yeah. Yeah. And you're just in that world. I, I I just always think that is a little more like special. Yeah. I just I, I think that's kind of the way to go. Um, you know. Yeah. But again, in the case of Beauty and the Beast, I'm sure it's a spectacular ride. Um anyway. Uh so yeah, I love it. I, I think it's a great it's, it's such a great addition to yeah. Toontown and Disneyland in general. Yeah. It's, it makes me, I'm going to come over here now. I never used to do that. Yeah. Um, I just never did. And, I, and I'll say this too, though, but I'm going to, I'm going to bring it back. Bring, we've been too positive. I'm going to bring it back to a negative because I don't want to keep it. I don't want people to think I just love everything. Okay. Yeah. I will. I, I've said this before. We did a Toontown episode, didn't we? Yeah. But I'm going to, I'm going to reiterate this. Toontown never clicked with me because the other lands in Disneyland, like, like, when you watch TV and they do a parody of Disneyland or, or whatever, they always, how do they parody it? It's like cartoony shit with characters everywhere yeah. and la, 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 la. Like it's like, it's a bunch of cartoon stuff everywhere, whatever. But the real parks weren't like that. And that's what I liked as a kid. Then you'd go and it's like, well, yeah, there's Mickey, there's things like that. Yeah. Sure. But New Orleans Square was... Ha, there's, again, there's like a romance to it. Yeah. It's like a real place, kind mm -hmm. of, but with creepy secrets. Oh, there's the Haunted Mansion. There's pirates. Yeah. It's not all based on a cartoon. It's it's like, oh, there's things to discover here. Yeah. 
Uh, Indiana Jones is based on a movie, but it was kind of like, ooh, we're going to a temple. Yeah. It had that grit to it. Toontown, to me, always felt like tourists. Like, like, make a foot, like, like this was made for a tourist to take a photo in. Do you know what I mean? Like, okay. it's like, it doesn't have that lived in thing. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we made it all look like a cartoon, so it would look funny in a photo. I just didn't buy it as a kid. Like I did those other lands that I felt like they had some mystery to them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, totally. Uh, so I always had that issue with it, but I feel like um, a ride like this adds another aesthetic to it where it's like, it's even more selling like, no, it is a cartoon. Like, yeah. I don't know. Um, I like, so they've enhanced Toontown. Um, I still don't know if I love its aesthetic, but by this being here and, and kind of adding another dimension to it where it's yeah. like, you can actually like interact with it. I guess that's what it is. Yeah. Toontown to me, uh, even even the Roger Rabbit ride, you're kind of looking at a lot of static things. Yeah. And that to me, that's what uh, contributed to that feeling of just like, it's a lot of just cartoony things to look at and take a picture of. Mm. Mickey, I just feel like it involves you more. So okay. I yeah, like that. Totally. And the one part, and I also like Mickey's house too. Mm. I always thought that walkthrough was kind of cool. That's still here, so yeah. whatever. Yeah, that didn't go anywhere. Um, but it does make me worry, like, again, changing Splash Mountain to Princess and the Frog, cool. Then they made a, uh, they turned a store in New Orleans Square into Princess and the Frog. That was cool to me yeah. too, fine. But now they're also changing like a restaurant to Princess and the Frog that was kind of, uh, you know, the a French market, which was yeah. kind of an, a classy place, you yeah. know, whatever. It's been around forever. Yeah, it's been so. there since the 60s. Yeah. Um, and that being themed after a cartoon now too, I'm like, okay, that's like the third thing. I don't, I don't know how many, I just, I don't want the parks to be all cartoons. Yeah. Because that to me, I feel like my worry is that we've had a generation raised on like these executives now were raised on the idea that that's what the theme parks were. Oh, it's a bunch yeah. of cartoons. Yeah. But they kind of never were. They 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 had those yeah. Disney stories. Land, the, yeah. New Orleans Square. These were all just yeah. based on cool places, not, yeah. not actual IPs. Yeah, and they, they can be based on an IP and still have yeah. that, you know, texture to it. Again, like Galaxy's Edge feels lived in to me, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's possible to give everything that grit. Um but I just, yeah, I hope that's remembered. I just hope they don't, I know they want to put an IP on everything, but I do think there's a danger of losing that mystery and that the that romance, you totally, know what I mean? Totally. I don't know if I'm getting too hit, too weird with this, but this is a hit to me, but it belongs here. I just, I don't, I think that was the problem with the great movie ride. Yeah. You were going through detailed like, Wow, experiences from all these movies that had grit and detail yeah. to them. And now that's a cartoon, too. Just don't... This is a hit here. But it's all about context. Yeah. New Orleans Square doesn't need more cartoons in it. The mystery of it is perfect as it is. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Am I making... Is, yeah. am I, oh, is my totally. point made? Totally. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. So I hope that they don't take this as like, we can make everything a cartoon. I don't know. That's what yeah. I'm getting at. I've said enough about that. <laughs> so I didn't want to be too positive. But I will be again. Yeah. I, I love this ride. I yeah, thought it was it's great. great. It's a great ride. Yeah. I really, really like it. Uh, anything else to say about it? I'm trying to think. I think that's it. Yeah. Now, when when they were making Galaxy's Edge, there was a rumor yeah. that this was going to be, uh, they were going to bulldoze this for Galaxy's Edge. Yes. Instead, they bulldozed the... Uh, ranch oh, in Frontierland. Thunder Ranch Barbecue. Or the, it was oh, an all-you-can-eat barbecue. I loved now, it. I loved it. Now that, okay, now, let me ask you. Now that we have this ride here, and Toontown is unquestionably better than it was, yeah. would you still sacrifice Toontown for, to, to build Galaxy's Edge to save the barbecue, all-you-can-eat barbecue restaurant? Uh, I like this too much. I, you I, like the ride. I'm sorry, yeah. Because uh, I know you love that restaurant. I loved that restaurant. Loved it, but I, I, I could do without it. This, I'm glad wow. I'm Glad it was here. The scale finally tipped, because I, I have asked you this before, and you were like, no, I, I want that barbecue back. Like, <laughs> I like you, you were like, get rid of Toontown. Part. What's that? I, I want them to rebuild that somewhere else. Yeah. They have the closest thing to it 
is uh, in Florida, Trails End, and they just announced that won't be a buffet anymore. It's gonna be grab and go options. Are you joking? The, the, it already wasn't, hasn't been a buffet for like months, I yeah. guess. They made it just sit, they bring you stuff. Yeah. Sit down restaurant. And now it's gonna be like, do you wanna grab a sub sandwich? No. <laughs> anyway, I didn't wanna offend any kids here. I was gonna say something, I was gonna say something way worse. But all these kids playing hide and seek. This might be the best area in Disneyland. What do you think? Uh, no. No? Wow. All right, more for me. Nope. Disney hater, more more of the park for me. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm gonna go enjoy this area. So, could you hold that for yeah. a second? Sorry, I, um, I got these, uh, I told you these pants are, these vintage Disneyland pants are really warm, but uh, I didn't uh, tie them correctly, so they keep falling. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, they're on now. I think I, I think I dropped my AirPods somewhere. Hey, I'm gonna hide in the frame and see if you could find me. I think they found you. Yeah. I was in the shot? Yeah. They could see that? Yep. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Let's go on, let's go on the ride. That line is way too long. Forget that. Oh, yeah, screw that. I'm not doing that. Uh, you thought that was the end of the episode, um, but what do we even say about what just happened? We got pulled out of line of the Mickey. We went up, we were gonna go on it again, and we got pulled out of line by security. Because uh, of Rocco's funny ending to the, the video. I noticed when I threw the camera in the trash can at the end, a couple cast members here looked at me very funny, and I was like, ooh, should I explain what I just did? They looked at me like, what did he just put in the trash? But I just did. I was like, yeah, I don't want to bother him. Yeah. And then, yeah, we were watching, we were in the line for the ride, and I'm, we're looking at security circle the place again and again. And it's yeah. like, uh-oh, someone's in trouble. And then all of a sudden it was, can you two come with us? <laughs> and they pulled. Yeah, they were... Totally cool. About they handled it. it so well. They just wanted to know what's up. They're like, yeah. It was just weird. Somebody, it was look weird, and they, somebody called it in. Yeah. And they were so nice I did, about it. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know what it was about. And then they were like, "Did you? Were you filming the trash cans?" I was like, yeah. "Oh, I can explain that." Yeah. So anyway, they were super nice, super, super nice. kind. I'm, I'm glad they're thorough. I'm <laughs> yeah. Glad they're, they care a lot. Like, we we told them that it was like, "Hey, yeah, you you saw something real weird, so yeah. you investigated it. So that's good. Understandable. <laughs> yeah, everybody's so cool about it. And uh, then we just went up. They they let us on the ride. They dude, they cut us on the they cut us right on the ride. <laughs> we didn't even have to wait in the rest of the line or anything. So. Anyway, yeah. shout out, but that was a very <laughs> was weird experience. experience. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. So that's the real ending to that episode. Okay, now I'm going to end. Now, what's a funny way to end? I'm just kidding. I'm never doing that again. I'm never doing that again. No more trash transitions. Uh, I'm going to go to the light. Like all good things. Take care. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, ponder this orb. <laughs> <laughs>